Hey, what's up, everybody? Isaac back with you here for a brand new episode of the Unorthodox Social Worker, where we do discuss all things social work from an unorthodox perspective. If you do like this type of content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, if you wanted to know some further background information about myself as a social worker, um, please check out one of my first two videos where I do go into further detail about my background. But Back to the topic at hand today. Um, this one is about uh, New Jersey. I just came back from Newark, New Jersey and read an uh, interesting article over there from the New York Post. And the title is NYC. Let's pull it up here. NYC dumped homeless into New Jersey to live in, quote, squalor investigation. So this um, article was outlining a new program called the SOTA program in New York, which is a housing voucher for homeless individuals, which can house people um, in the city of New York and also out of state as well. So before we get into that article, let me just give you a brief uh, background information about this SOTA program voucher. And this is from the, uh, I believe, the DHS, New York DHS website. So it says, what is the SOTA Special One-Time Assistance Program. The SOTA program provides one year's full rent upfront for eligible DHS clients to move within New York City to other New York State counties or another state, Puerto Rico or Washington, D.C. SOTA can be accessed by working individuals and families and those who receive SSI, SSD, etc. as long as there is the future ability to make rent payments based on the household's rent income not exceeding 50% of households income. So it does sound like a, a housing voucher that will pay for a full year of rent. It sounds like anywhere in the country and even Puerto Rico. So I wonder how many, uh, there's a lot of Puerto Ricans in New York. How many um, are utilizing this voucher to move back to Puerto Rico? That's kind of cool. Next, who is eligible? Eligibility criteria include the following. Families with children, the household must have been in shelter for at least 90 days. Single adults and families, um, the house must be working or have enough income to make future rent payments based on their rent, not exceeding 50% of household income. Income includes employment, SSI, SSD, etc. Okay, and if the household is moving within New York City, it must not be eligible for any federal, state, or city rental subsidy. So this seems like a pretty cool program that it, uh, you know, the eligibility states that as long as the rent is not more than 50% of your household income, you are eligible. So I'd be more curious to know, is there an additional financial eligibility? Um, typically, you know, people have to be low income, like either 30 to 50%, you know, 50% or below of the median income. This information doesn't really tell us that. So I'd like to know, um, that'd be interesting to know whether you do have to be making less than 50% of the area median income. It does not specify. Okay. They already talked about that. How does household apply and shelter apply for soda? Case managers and housing specialists identify clients who may be eligible. Uh, in addition, clients may reach out to their case manager or housing specialist if they be, may be eligible. Housing specialists assist clients with their housing search. Uh, and they can also find units on their own. So it sounds like there's housing specialists and um, other things like that. Okay, is there an apartment review required when using soda? So this is the good, interesting stuff because this article I'm about to read to you makes accusations that uh, homeless individuals were being um, housed in Newark, New Jersey into units where they were not conducting, um, you know, inspections and there was things like uh, broken heaters and things like that. So it does say DHS or provider staff conduct walkthroughs if the unit is within New York City in the in the New York state counties of Nassau, Rockland, Suffolk, and Westchester, or in the New Jersey counties of Bergen, Essex, Hudson, Middlesex, Passaic, and Union. So I do believe Newark is in Bergen County. So it does state here under the guidelines that a, uh, a inspection of the unit must take place if they are being housed in 
Newark, New, New Jersey. Okay, that's there's some more information, but that's the basic uh, overview of what SOTA is. So again, it does sound like a rental assistance program that will pay for homeless individuals or families who have been residing in New York City shelter for at least three months. And it gives the ability to house people either in New York City or outside of New York City. Okay. And then now I'm going to go into this uh, article and we'll talk about it. So the title, NYC dumped homeless into New York, into New Jersey to live in squalor investigation. Homeless New Yorkers moved to New Jersey under a controversial program were left living in squalor at the mercy of exploitative landlords, a damning new report from the Department of Investigation says. In its latest blow suffered by City Hall's controversial special one-time assistance program, which provides families in New York maligned shelter system a year's worth of rent if they relocate outside of the five boroughs. So you can kind of see they hyped it up and took things out of context. The article says in the late, uh, the program, which provides families in New York's malign shelter system a year's worth of rent if they relocate outside of the five boroughs. So when we just read the guidelines from the DHS website. It did say that you could live within New York City. So this article kind of implies that the, the voucher is for outside of New York City only. But actually, um, I was reading in another article, one third of the uh, vouchers are used for within New York City. Quote, the SOTA program was designed to help New York families break the cycle city of homelessness and set them on a path to achieve stable, stable affordable housing, said the DOI commissioner. However, DOI's investigation has found the promise of the program is not being fulfilled. Instead, because of lack of proper oversight and poorly designated paperwork, our investigations showed that some families placed in housing outside of New York City were living in squalor under the roofs of unscrupulous landlords. The laundry list of hardships participants found themselves facing suggests some went from the frying pan to the fire. One apartment's temperature was a chilly 42.6 degrees thanks to a defective boiler. I like that. They said fire, frying pan to fire and then to chilly. A nice play on words. Another home was infested with insect and vermin also lacked heat. A third property was deemed suitable despite having 52 open violations. But the owners of those property report, the report found collected tens of thousands of dollars in rental payments up front from the city to provide these subpar conditions with little risk of accountability for their actions. The de Blasio administration has spent $89 million since SOTA, uh, since its inception of the program to relocate 5,000 families. According to the New York Post, in October, nearly 12,000 of these families landed in New York, Newark, which is New Jersey's largest city. Okay, so let's look at these numbers right quick. I mean, and before we actually go back to these numbers, I wanna pull out another stat. This is another article. Bill de Blasio ships NYC homeless. Oh no, not that one. De Blasio bungles on the homeless system Yet again, there is nothing inherently wrong with Blasio's pot program placing cities' homeless families in apartments outside of the five boroughs. But boy, have they bungled on this situation. And let me find the, uh, the quote I was looking for. So, 1,200 of them out of 5,000 ended up in Newark. So roughly about 20% of this 89 million was um, going to New York, Newark, New Jersey. I can't find the quote in here, but basically when reading the article in this other New York Post article, it stated that housing specialists, when they were housing people in Newark, New Jersey, were going off pictures from the internet or using internet reports as their proof of inspection. So they don't make it clear whether these workers were actually taking pictures from the internet and putting them in their case files and then falsifying it, claiming that they took those pictures. So claiming that they actually went to the unit to inspect when they actually didn't and they just got pictures from the internet and it doesn't specify whether it was actually them saying, oh, I didn't visit the unit and here are some pictures. But of course, when the, uh, according to the program guidelines, um, 
it is clear that an inspection in Bergen County, where Newark is, was mandatory for the uh, city to pay the rent. So obviously that was not happening, and that's what kind of uh, caused the this whole article. But when we look at the numbers, so again, $89 million was spent total. Um, roughly 20% of that uh, was people in Newark. So what's like 20% of 90 uh, million? Let's check it out. 0. 0.20 times 90. So roughly $18 million of, looks like, was spent to house people in Newark, New Jersey. And typically when I look at housing programs, about maybe 25% of the budget of that money is spent towards the housing voucher and the rest of the 75% is for like administration costs. So if we times 18 million times uh, 25%, that means that about 4.5 million, it sounds like roughly was spent to actually, um, you know, 4.5 million was spent on actually housing people paying the rents in Newark, New Jersey. Now note that this article says that tens of thousands, Newark, New Jersey landlords receive tens of thousands of dollars. Okay, so you could see, let's be, uh, let's be, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt. If they're saying tens of thousands of dollars, let's pretend let, that uh, these landlords accepted approximately $90,000 worth of vouchers. So, that is a very small percentage of the um, people in Newark, New Jersey, the landlords, out of 4.5 million, that about 90,000 was spent, you know, uh, on these unlivable units. And, you know, with rent being so expensive in Newark, that sounds like maybe $90,000 worth of rent could probably easily be, you know, between five and 10. Uh, individuals rent so i wouldn't be surprised if um this negligence was all a result of one housing specialist you know someone housing these five to ten people so in my opinion this uh article kind of hypes the um uh, problem it does kind of sound like an isolated incident because it's such a small percentage of these units being found unhabitable uninhabitable that the money was paid to, you know, that, so it sounds like 90,000 at the max was the amount they paid to uninhabitable living conditions, but the other 4.4 million was potentially uh, legitly inspected. So I do believe there is a, a little bit of hype in this article. Okay, so... This goes into inspections. So yes, you know, every time, every homeless uh, housing program I've worked in does require an inspection to be taken place in order for, um, you know, to for the government to pay for the unit. Okay, and um, it's usually by a HQS standard, which is the standard that Housing and Urban Development uses, and you're checking for things that make a unit livable. If they do not have these things present or working, then you cannot pass the unit. These things could include heat, hot water, adequate bathing and cooking area, uh, minimal structural damage, fire, uh, smoke alarm, uh, carbon monoxide detector, things of that. So these are normal. Okay, now I wanna talk about how maybe this could go into how because i know in new york when i worked in new york the place i worked at did house people but we were a non-profit so a lot of times people just want to go blame the cities but what they don't understand is that the money usually comes from a government entity and then gets contracted out to a non-profit perhaps whoever this uh non-profit was where these uh workers were working that weren't doing their inspections you know maybe they just weren't a good non-profit who knows, maybe they failed their audit and uh, they already lost the money, which brings my point that I think this, the government should be more responsible for administering the frontline work of housing programs because then it's just going to be much more 
better oversight and a higher level of uh, standards to be expected. So I kind of talk about this in my last video, but it goes into how I think these states should be um, more proactive on the front line of homeless uh, services programs. Now, another thing which I think is interesting is do these people have recertifications of the unit in order to pay ongoing rent? So if a client finds somewhere to be housed or the housing specialist does, is the government just cutting the landlord an upfront check for the whole year's rent on day one? Are they paying them month by month? Uh, if they're paying all the rent uh, up front, that could be problematic because what if something happens where the client has to leave the unit or they damage the unit or something like that and the city already paid them the full year's rent? I don't know. And then additionally, if they are paying it month by month, does the uh, the workers for this program have to go back to the unit and inspect it every three months, every six months? If they are only doing um, initial inspections, then of course, if they inspect the unit at the beginning, everything's fine. And then six months later, the uh, heater breaks and they don't report it to the uh, housing program, then that could be a potential issue. So if they're not doing recertifications for... Um, inspections i believe that is something that the city should take into account and then i already talked about how this could be kind of like a you know an isolated incident in my opinion it's kind of um, overhyped and it seems like the majority of the money is being uh, spent you know tens of thousands of dollars out of a budget of i think it said 86 million you know um, that's really just a drop in the water okay and that goes into what happened um, on these audits. I believe the DOI. So maybe the DOI did um, audit this program. And maybe this was the result of the audit. And, maybe, and uh, if they did find this in their audits, I can guarantee you that the agency, whoever um, provided these uh, faulty inspection services, probably did not get their grant um renewed for the next year so it kind of gives a bad name to all the other agencies the majority of who are doing the correct thing and uh, it just focuses on this one negative uh, it's kind of political um but yet nevertheless interesting okay but i think the more uh controversial part of this program is the fact that uh, you're able to send people out of state so I don't know what you guys think. Do you think that the city of New York should be sending people out of state first off without complete conducting an inspection of that out of state unit? So they could be potentially sending people to uninhabitable units, you know, in f more farther away states. But yet the city is still uh, paying the rent. So I could see that as a liability on the uh, part of the city. I think maybe they would need to rethink that one a little bit better. And then when I, in my last video about homelessness in San Francisco, I did talk about how other cities do send their clients um, to other counties and states to get rid of their homeless to end up being homeless in that new city. The only difference with this program is that um, they're actually sending people to other states to be housed. So I do think that's positive. At least they're paying for their rent. And um, not only that, these people you know, they receive the landlords of that state, it's going to increase that state's economy because the city of New York is injecting rent money to property owners in other states. But um, there was another article on the New York Post, which uh, it's called Bill de Blasio ships NYC homeless to North Carolina despite ban against state. And it reads, Mayor Bill de Blasio is sending homeless New Yorkers to live in North Carolina, even though he banned the city in 2016 from doing business with the Tar Heel State over its controversial bathroom bill. He's ignoring his own travel ban, North Carolina State Senator Republican told The Post. I think it's just a clear example of another social justice warrior that is simply a hypocrite. So you see the news kind of pol do the polarizing political thing and kind of being uh, political about this. Bill de Blasio still hasn't lifted his travel ban, which prohibits non-essential travel for city employees to North Carolina, even though the state partially repealed the law prohibiting people from using restrooms in accordance with their gender identities in 2017. 
the mayor's office has said the new bathroom rules don't go far enough. Over the past two years, city taxpayers have given North Carolina landlords approximately $640,000 to house 40 Big Apple families who are living in the city's homeless shelters under a program called the Special One-Time Assistance. So again, you know, this program is injecting just in rent payments $640,000 into the economy of uh, North Carolina. The $89 million program has come under fire for sending families to other cities around the country without notifying local officials or assuring they get quality housing. So he has a restriction for New Yorkers to come to North Carolina, but he doesn't have a problem with sending these individuals to our community. This appears to be a bit hypocritical, said Fayetteville Mayor Mitch Colvin, a Democrat who has six NYC families in his district. Okay. We are as compassionate as a community you will ever find anywhere. The problem I had in this initiative the po of the policy of disrespecting the fact that you should notify the city of what you are doing when you send these people. So again, I believe, you know, this goes back to how I believe the state, the, the governments should be more responsible for the front line because I can guarantee you that any shelter or nonprofit that got contracted to house, the, house these uh, individuals with their grant is not contacting the official state or county of uh, where they're sending their client, that is kind of unheard of, but maybe that's something they should consider. But then again, my point is that if the cities, the governments were more responsible for the front end and housing work, then they would be more likely to notify out of state uh, jurisdiction. Britt also added, there's not aware of any other city or state that continued the travel ban. Uh, blah, blah, blah. It's going to fall on the burden of the taxpayers of North Carolina to support more folks because of their actions. Okay, uh, I'm going to stop there, but just think about that last line. Uh, somebody from North Carolina said it's going to fall on the burden of taxpayers of North Carolina to support more folks because of their actions. That I don't really agree with because first of all, you're bringing in that $640,000 first off into the economy of North Carolina going to uh, North Carolina property owners. Additionally, the provisions of the program state that the clients must have, um, you know, a sustainable income. So um, more than likely, they will have to have a job when they're there. If they have a job, then they're going to be, become a taxpayer of North Carolina and inject even more um, income, taxpayer income into the uh, state of North Carolina. And even if someone is just living down there with SSI, Half their rent's going to go to SSI. I mean, to rent half their SSI is going to go to rent, and then the other half of their Social Security is going to be spent in the local economy. So I don't think, in my opinion, that the taxpayers are going to have to pay anything for these people. If anything, these new uh, housed, formerly homeless individuals will be injecting tax money into the economy of North Carolina. So I do not believe... Uh, that that is true. I think that this state is more just mad that they are sending their homeless individuals and maybe the stigma stigma of homeless people and thinks that maybe they will uh, fall back into homelessness and then utilize all of the um, resources that North Carolina has. But in my opinion, they are actually uh, injecting money. Um, so all in all, I th you know, I thought this was a really interesting article. Um, I do sit, still think it's a little a controversial that they are sending people out of state. I don't think it's ridiculous that they are sending people to Newark, New Jersey, though, because that's literally right across the uh, river from New York. It's like as far as Oakland is from San Francisco. But um, that is kind of the more controversial part in my aspect. Of course, like in any industry, there's going to be shady workers, shady organizations and stuff like that. And that is kind of what happened here. It seemed like a small percentage of workers or could have even been one worker was not conducting inspections. It got let out to the media and got blown out of proportion. In my opinion, it does sound like a great program, a very helpful program. And I've always thought New York was a pretty good and pretty abundant with their housing voucher uh, resources. Um, when I was in New York in the early 2010s, they had a similar voucher called the Advantage Voucher, which which was pretty much like the same thing. 
Um, you have to live in the shelter for three months and then they would pay your rent for, I think it was even longer than a year. And they cut you a, a check for rent and all of that um, good stuff. But what needs to change is the process and maybe the audit needs to be a little bit more stringent. It sounds like the audit in from this report recovered um, the bad players and hopefully those those people lost their grant. See, these are the parts that the articles don't tell you about. Is that a provider or city worker? Is that individual or agency still in business? More likely than not, no, because they caught do it. They were caught doing fraudulent activity. They probably lost their grant. Now they're ruling it for the rest of the uh, grantees of the program. Okay. And um, I can guarantee you now that, you know, it is kind of positive that this article came out because I can guarantee you now that every single housing subsidy program that requ requires an inspection in New York. So not just the soda program, but I'm going to guarantee you the Section 8 program, the Veterans program, all other programs, the inspectors are going to be um, doing a lot more stringent inspections at this point, um, simply due to the media hype because they don't want to be the next worker to be found uh, lacking on their job you know when i was working in oakland in housing during the ghost ship fire which you guys probably remember it was like a art commune warehouse party and there was a a big fire which killed a lot of the people you know due to i guess lack of oversight of housing code and i'll tell you when that incident happened whenever i went to any type of housing inspection for one of my clients the um, inspectors were like sticklers about everything so it is positive, I think, that this news came out in the sense that there will be a higher standard of livability in the inspections. But then at the same time, the negative could be is that, you know, there could be a uh, they could be too strict with these uh, rules and maybe denying perfectly suitable units. You know, I've seen things like after the ghost ship fire, an inspector has failed a unit for not having a door liner or something like that, like something basic. And just like San Francisco, New York is a crazy expensive rental market with not a lot of housing stock. So it's pretty much very hard to get housing. And by becoming more stringent with these uh, housing inspections due to the media backlash, uh, there will probably be less amount of units passed for these housing um, programs. Okay. But overall, I think it's a great program. I, th I don't think you should believe the hype. I mean, just look at the numbers. Um, you know, nothing's perfect, okay? And a lot of it just has to come down to the worker, the organization. You know, a lot of, if you are a client of homeless services, a lot of what it may come down to, whether you're going to get the help you want, is if you get along with your caseworker and they're willing to help you out. Sometimes it's just the luck of the draw, and I don't think it's good to make... Um, a broad generalization about this or anything else. So with that, that's the uh, video for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the content. You know, I just got back over there from the East Coast. I thought it was an interesting article that I would bring up. And um, that's it for today. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you do like this type of content. And I will see you guys next time. Peace out.